Jesus. Jesus. Alright, let's go into this. It is a 1-0 lead for Bjorn. He spawns to the top left-hand side as the blue Terran player. And down to the bottom right, it's going to be our red Terran player from Envious. It is Port. Thank you very much, XR. First-time player for the two-month resub. Can we get some S2 hearts and some love in the chat for a two-month resub? -er? And that's actually going to put us back up to 97 subs, actually, with that resub there. So we're so close to 100, guys. Can we hit 100 today? Can we make it past that 100 barrier? I believe in us all. I believe in us all. If you do enjoy the stream, don't forget that subscribe button is a great way to support. Although if you'd rather support in other ways, there is cheers, there is donations, there's Patreons. It's exciting times. We now have loudest cheer of the month. So if you're the first person to cheer this month, you can be the loudest cheer. We also have other cool things for cheers now. Whenever we have a cheer coming in the chat, I've got some cool stuff planned. You'll see what that is a little bit later on whenever someone cheers. Um, obviously, as well, we're going to be having the, um, uh, what else are we going to have? We're going to have the, hmm, uh, we have, uh, paper and subs, monthly top donations open right now. We're heading towards 100 subs, though. 100 subs, so, so hyped. So, so hyped for that. Exciting times. Again, guys, how is everyone doing today? Do let me know who you're cheering on and let me know what's happening. As we set up into this first uh, first game that we get to see, the second game of this series between Pult and Bjorn. Again, I'm so sorry. I'm going to go and I'm literally going to go and tell this organizer, like, dude, what are you doing? You're literally just giving up good games on the stream. Like, this playoffs is going to be over within, like, another hour or something at this rate, you know? Like, it's the playoffs. I'm sure the players for, you know, you know at this point they're winning money. Surely they can stick around and play a little bit longer and stuff like that, you know? Surely. Surely they can commit to that you know it's not like you know I can understand sort of the round of eight because like in the round of eight you're still not guaranteed money you don't want to maybe sit around all day but what you do you know once you do you win then you're you're in the money I'm sure you can sit around and give up some extra time just to make better stream out of it so I don't know so again guys sorry that we missed uh, game number one but this is game number two now between Bjorn and Port and we are just gonna be uh, Setting up into it. So we are going to be seeing an Impult has opened much more aggressively than his opponent with his CC coming down way later. Sorry, no, I'm completely wrong. Impult is actually the one who's just started building the CC. Um, I saw uh, Bjorn's build earlier and I thought it was going to be a command center based opening, but it's not. Both players actually opting for a Hellion here early and it's actually going to be Bjorn who commits into a second Hellion and another Reaper on the way. So he's going to commit to somewhat of a Reaper Hellion based opening in the early stages of this. And Pult, well again, he's got his expansion on the way up, but however, he's going to lose this first Hellion. Oh, is it going to go down? It is indeed. Just gets caught. Just, just, just gets caught on the edge there, so. Hellion goes down. That's a little bit of a victory for Bjorn. He definitely will be the aggressor in this. Are we going to see a medevac? What are we going to see at the starport? He's got a fair amount of gas in the bank, so it could be anything. Viking first? Okay. It's interesting. So a few Reapers, a few Hellions towards the front from Bjorn, but not really kind of going to go anything too aggressive. The starport, etc., so... Really, Pult shouldn't really take much damage from this. It's, oh, Widermine goes off on a Hellion. And Bjorn realizes that, that just happened a little bit too, you know, came in. He realized it a bit too late, so couldn't do much against it. He's going to try and fight these Marines now. So trying to get something done. I was going to see those, uh, another grenade coming down and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, Ian's just kind of seeing what they're doing, seeing what they're getting up to. I mean, Pult's going to have this Medivac out. He's going to start boosting it across the map. He's obviously not got any units in this. So, in a way, this is, um... You know, in a way, this is sort of like... Pult kind of like... I don't know. Is Pult sort of saying, like, I want to see what you're up to, so actually I'm going to pretend to be aggressive. This Viking does a lot of damage, though. He knows the Medivac. So, um... Able to kind of keep that alive. As he pulls it back in. We will see the SCV just starting to repair up this Medivac. So Medivac being repaired over here, that Viking going to be heading out onto the map from Pult as well. A couple of Marines from Bjorn just going to be splitting out onto the map. I'm going to see this Viking coming in, and the Viking from uh, Bjorn just going to push that Viking off his opponent back once again. So just a little trade here in the early stages, Bjorn finds himself a few workers behind, and again for me the most interesting thing is that neither of these players has actually ended up being too aggressive at all. You know, we're sort of in a situation now where both players just sort of sat here and just sort of um, all even. So all even right now in this. As you're going to see a few SCVs just repairing up that Viking. So Viking getting a little bit of a repair right now. 
I'm just seeing what's going on. Yeah, this is gonna this this tournament is gonna end so so early um, today compared to what I thought it was gonna be. I actually put the team league an hour further back because I thought this might l run on a little longer, but that's not the case. So what we could actually do, guys, if you guys are interested, we could put up the um, we could put on like a rebroadcast of the team league semi-finals, so you guys can remind yourselves how Liquid and Millennium won out those series to get to the finals. That's something we could do if there's any interest in it. So let me know. As you do see this Banshee coming in. Had a pretty good time already. Six weeks has killed the second Banshee, moving towards a natural expansion. And you can see Pold is just waiting on a scan, waiting for something to be able to get rid of this. But he just doesn't have it just yet. No energy. In fact, he's still 15 energy away. SCVs have to be pulled off the line to start uh, repairing this reactor. And Banshee going to start doing a bit more of it here as well. As the second Banshee comes in, we'll pick up one kill already. Now cloaks itself and... This is really awkward because he's going to have to use two scans now to get rid of both these Banshees unless Bion makes a mistake. And actually we just don't see that really happening at all. First scan actually didn't go down. I think Bion actually did fly into the turret there. So uh, that is the mistake we're talking about. So just one scan to clean this up. But good damage done. And Bion finds himself at an 8 worker leap a bit behind an army. And maybe with a counter attack here from Pult with some Vikings and tanks. Maybe he can get something done. Third CC finishes from Bion in position as well. So continuing to take advantages in this game. As we are going to be seeing that CC just finishing, morphing into an orbital right now. Just morphing into an orbital and see where he can go from there. A couple of Hellions and a Reaper going to be moving down the left-hand side of the map. Second Reaper coming in as well. And a few Marines and a tank off to the left side as well. Yuna's going to come in from Pult then. So here comes this push we were just talking about. Sort of interesting actually. Uh, more tanks here for Pult than there is for Bjorn as we see the Cyclone locking on. Getting a little bit of a kill there but... Everything really, the tanks are just going to do so much. Continue to push up this left side. There's a siege tank sieging though, actually, which might make a bit of a difference in this, as we'll see now. That will be enough for uh, Bjorn to push this back. Viking's going to land though, so he's going to keep on trying to fight this. Some micro from the medivacs. It's a weird little kind of fight that we're seeing between the players. And it's a little bit here, there, and everywhere right now. So that's a little bit, um, a little bit interesting. Anyways, we're going to be seeing these uh, units from Pull just going to be joined up together. And coming in towards the uh, natural expansion. So, a few years from Pult coming in towards the natural. And just going to be sieging themselves up. Get set and ready to go. So, sieging themselves up. Getting ready to go into this. And you'll see a few SCVs just repairing up that siege tank here. I mean, all said and done, Pult finds himself very, very far behind in terms of economy. Bjorn is already set up onto three bases with a lot of workers. Obviously, from Pult, what we're seeing is he's wanting to commit to just two bases for a long time here. But... I mean, Bjorn is already setting up into five racks of his own. Bjorn's just had such a such a huge lead. I mean, Bjorn is actually even ahead on the kind of reactor production on his barracks. So he's going to have more barracks production. The only way Pult does have a lead is still in the tanks and in the Vikings. And that can become very important. He actually has a couple of Liberators as well. So this push is still very, very powerful from Pult. Despite the fact he may be behind in other ways in the game. I was just going to be seeing these units starting to move out. Vikings and a couple of Liberators all just collecting together. As we see him moving up the left-hand side, a few Marines going up the left as well. There's Medivac also, and we're looking to see what it can get up to. So everything's starting to move in towards the upper left side of this here. I mean, he's going to siege up in this sort of location here, but there's already a couple tanks in position, but that's what those Liberators could be very useful for. Oh, he doesn't see the tanks yet. Now he does, as he loses some units. Liberator's going to come forward, so he's actually just going to fight this. The Liberators don't want to get targeted down, though, because that's a really great way for him to push back uh, tanks of his opponent and really kind of gain position on the map. And he actually wins this fight quite convincingly. There's that Liberator. Should siege up now a little bit further forwards. I don't know why he's dropping into the sieged up tank. I mean, a Liberator would do the same job without kind of taking damage himself. But here he goes. So Pult gets into a strong little position here. He is behind on upgrades by plus one armor. He's behind on combat shields as well, which is also quite huge. But the real power of his army right now is coming in in the sky with these Liberator. Well, with the Liberator, with the Vikings. With the tanks count on the ground as well, more so than the Marines. Beyond. He's actually got a is that medevac. It is double medevac coming across the map here. But actually, Pult is going to run into this. He targets down one, and well, the other one is going to get targeted down as well. So those marines get shut down quickly, and Pult actually shuts down that potential aggression, which could have done quite a bit considering those combat shields and an upgrade lead for Pult there, or for Bjorn there. Pult shutting that down is actually very important. So that turned out pretty nicely in the end, as you see the tanks continue to push forwards. I'm still surprised he just doesn't push the Liberator a little bit further forwards right now. Just keep on bringing that Liberator in. And see so here we go. Actually, the tanks are going to commit forwards into this. And this is going to be it. A couple of tanks actually up in the skies right now out of Pult, which is a little bit of a mistake for him. As reinforcements come in, though, and I think he's just going to have enough to kind of clean this up. Vikings in the sky have to be a little bit careful, though. More Marines coming down to the low ground. The tanks of Pult are very low on health. 
This Liberator doing a little bit more damage. The Vikings still fighting as well. It's very, very close, but in the end, I think Pult still just maybe doesn't maintain a position, but when he reinforces, I think he might just have too much. His army supply is doubling that of Bjorn's right now, so he might just change directions, he even go towards the third base. There isn't that much right now from Bjorn. That being said, he does have more economy, so he can rebuild faster. And so time is taken for Pult here. He's got an advantage, but not forever. He has to make something happen at some point soon, otherwise he will fall behind once again. Still just um, opening nicely. The thing is that always impressed me about Bjorn's TVT is he always seems to have the right answers. He always seems to sneak in a third base before anyone else while also still defending just fine. He always seems to be able to sort of set up in a position where you know, his aggression is just timed nicely to work against whatever his opponent has done. And it's just so it's just so kind of crazy to watch his TVT because again he put himself into a great position in this game. Now we are still seeing you know pulled very much so in this game. But Bjorn, as time takes by, is getting into a better and better spot. This medevac drop is going to be turned away now because it was spotted. And so Pult knows he's better off just pulling away before he gets engaged by more marines that he just can't fight into. So, again, just Bjorn knowing the kind of right answers and having a unit in position there watching, you know, thinking, hey, how can I lose? Well, a drop to the top right side might do quite a lot, so I'm just going to position something there to see that coming in so I can counter it straight away. Scan up here from Pult as he tries to assess the situation he's about to be engaging into. He does have combat shields now, he's still got them Vikings. What's the Viking count actually out on either side? It is a heavy Viking lead for Bjorn. So that is still kind of him controlling the skies. And again, should really try and use that Liberator to push forwards with you, I think. Is a double med of that going to move across the map again? Ooh, if uh, Bjorn or Pult, sorry, had stayed kind of a bit inactive with these medivacs, that might be nice. You can see here, I think Pult is actually just uh, Bjorn. Sorry, I keep getting these guys messed up. Bjorn is setting up to come in from a couple of different angles. We're going to see those tanks continue to work away. They are going to pick off that refinery so refinery is going to get taken down i'm just going to be seeing a uh liberator siege up and this is what i mean just siege and liberate up get rid of these tanks nice and easily here he goes stimming in towards the third base though and finally pull finds a way to get damage done this is see a lot of marines stimming in as a counter to that he will have to boost away reinforcements going to get found here by these marines of bjorn and that's really nice pickups look at this all these units just move commanding through as they rallied oh man well that is really painful here scan comes down those marines still to the right hand side from pult very technical game still, and oh no, you would have thought Pult would have learned by now, but he hasn't. And these Marines keep coming across the map, and they keep getting much, so much done. And actually, he's going to come into the natural expansion, which is the main base orbital, so this is really, for Pult, something he cannot possibly afford to lose. But it looks as though he might even go down here. At the same time, we still see this push kind of moving forward slowly, but surely, here we go. Liberator will get taken down as tanks will drop, and I think there's just too much right now from Bjorn. He's going to break through this. And he's going to take a 2-0 lead in the best of five. Some Marines stem in from the right-hand side, but there's tanks set up defensively as well. And his pull drops to half the supply of his opponent. This is really just Bjorn once again looking so, so good in this matchup. He really is. This is crazy. I'm just going to be seeing uh, Pult. Well, soon enough, we'll have to tap out this. There's no real way for him to recover from this sort of deficit. 30 work is down. He's down in orbital. He's down in army. He's down in upgrades. There's absolutely nothing right now that Pult has going his way. There's absolutely nothing that's looking as though it should be like, yeah, Pult, rather than Woo Beyond. So everything is quite Woo Beyond right now. As we're going to see that command center coming down. This is just going to be uh, whenever Pult is up, whenever Beyond decides to attack, this is probably just going to be GG as we see some Marines going to come across the map. I mean, Pult's still trying to gather together. I still feel as though he just didn't use that Liberator as aggressively as he could have, the Viking control, etc. I feel he could have done so much more with that in the earlier stages. Uh, but he gave Bjorn the time, and again, when you sit in 10, 20 workers ahead throughout the entire game, time is your friend. And that's what Pult just didn't capitalize on. He didn't kind of shut down that advantage which Bjorn had, which was the economy. You know, but again, Pult's standing army was definitely a little bit stronger with the air control. But he didn't use it well enough. He didn't do enough with it. And again, now we just sort of see, well, Marines, Medivacs, Tanks just moving around, seeing what else they can do. A few Medivacs and a few Marines just going to be pulling down here as well, just going to be joining up. I'm just going to be seeing, yeah, there's units, they have to stem back here a little bit, so. They do stem back, I see a couple of Tanks getting lifted here, and again, another scan coming down. Marines going to start stemming forwards, and Tanks going to look to unload here as well. Marines will come in and engage. I mean, Pult initially has a pretty good fight in this, but eventually the Marines will wear out. And there's just so many tanks in the back from Bjorn. He'll clean this up and that will be GG right there. And all of a sudden Bjorn is up 2-0 in this best of five. It should be fantastic. It really, really should be. It should be great. 
I'm really looking forward to that. So, hope you guys are as well. The last ever season of the SHITL coming to an end this evening. It's been a long road. Started in October 2013. Season 1 was announced. Actually, I think it was October 21st, 2013. Three years later, it's the largest non-Korean team league. And, pff, well, I mean, Liquid and Millennium, what a finals. Two of the strongest non-Korean teams, two of the strongest foreign teams in this day and age where, obviously, Liquid, I mean, they've got Snoot. I mean, you talk about any Liquid player, and they all have such great results at some point this year. Snoot, second place, went to Championship, first place, NSL. Bunny has actually maybe been one of the players who hasn't done quite as well, but still has plays highly in DreamHacks and... Home Story Cups, etc. TLO has had a round of eight a couple of times in DreamHack this year. And of course their final player, Mana. He's had a bit of a, a bit of a tough year, but again, strong performances around. Took down Pult in Valencia. He was a semi finalist in the WCS finals last year. I mean it goes on and on and on and on. It really, really does. Their players are so well accomplished. And then Millennium. Marine World uh, finalist at DreamHack Valencia, Showtime WCS Summer Champion. I mean, both teams are so well accomplished. It'll be interesting. It'll be a great match, and it was a great match in the quarter in the group stages as well. That one did go to Millennium four games to three. I am Rookie. Thank you very much for subscribing. Can I get some SJ hearts in the chat, please? For I am Rookie. Thank you very much, dude. Can we see some love in the chat? Welcome to the War Disciples. Guys, that puts us up at what, like... I can't believe we're actually at 98 subscribers. The last few days has been so sub-crazy. Um, it really, really has. So thank you very much, I am Rookie, for the sub. Appreciate it, buddy. And again, welcome to the subs. Anyways, in this game, Bjorn to the bottom right, pull to the top left as we set up if into Frost. Both players are opening with one base committed plays initially here. From Bjorn, it's going to be a starport already on the way down as he goes into a Reaper Hellion opening. From Pult, it's going to be a Reaper 2x Reaper opening. He'll drop his factory down soon as well and might turn this into a few Hellions coming out as well in the near future as well. So maybe a bit of Reaper Hellion from Pult as well. Just a bit of a different way to get into that sort of point. As I see those Reapers joining up, up on the high ground. And oh, Bjorn has to be careful. He's going to lose that Reaper though. He didn't pull it back in time. He noticed it quite quickly. Just again, took a shot or two before he did pull it back. And that was enough to um, that was enough to shut down there. We're going to see this Reaper coming in. Pult just going to be coming in, joining up right now with these couple of Reapers. And what does he go into off the factory? He's built a reactor in a tech lab now. He's going to actually move his uh, fact, uh, barracks away. I wonder if he goes into a cloak Banshee and just puts the starport... Um, I just wonder if he puts the starboard onto that uh, tech lab there, so... Could be a possibility. We see Bjorn just going to collect together with a couple of, a couple of Hellions on the upper watchtower. Both players building command centers. Pult is going to be slightly further ahead. There's a Liberator, though, from Bjorn. And so the Liberator is one of the ways he'll look to try and get some damage done to try and kind of come back in this game a little bit throughout this. So let's see how it's going to go. As we do see this Liberator heading up towards the upper left-hand side right now. Look to see what is going to be going on. Look to see what exactly it's going to be able to get up to. Slippery going towards the top left. We do have a couple of Reapers, three Hellions, trying to move forwards and maybe break through that bunker a little bit. Maybe, just maybe. Reaper coming in from Pult is going to be ooh, shut down pretty quick. But he does have more Reapers, of course. And, uh, well, there's actually been a bit of trade. So, Pult just sitting back. He's got a bunker, though. This Liberator is the most interesting thing. But there's a Cyclone coming out now. However, that's what this Reaper Hellion is good at. It's good at kind of distracting to let the Cyclone, uh, you know, build the Cyclone out of position. But Pult is going to be too good. And he locks onto that Liberator. One kill and only the one kill. And the Liberator goes down. So not much gained really there by Bjorn. And he still sits a few workers behind in the early stages. He is now going to go into a Cloak Banshee follow-up. But if Pult deflects this as well without taking much damage, he'll continue to maintain that lead. And, well, we'll maybe see if he can establish that or create that, turn that into a win as the game continues. So a few Hellions are going to join up to the south side here on this bottom watchtower. Ripper is going to take this watchtower as well. And there's a few Reapers going to come down the south side also, having a look to see what exactly they can get up to. So a few Reapers through the south, having a look to see what they can do. And I'm just going to be seeing the uh, Reapers just going to be coming in 
And that actually might delay the third CC from building for a little while there, which would be nice. Although the Hellions are nearby, so he's going to have to try and target fire. He gets a grenade off. More Reapers going to come down this round. Two Reapers against two Hellions. He gets the SCV at least. Might get one more Hellion still, actually. He's getting low on health. Nice little bit of micro here so far. Pulling back, gets back in with the shots. He's actually going to win this fight completely. Great micro by Pult! As it will be the Banshee to save the day. Shuts down one, but not the second Reaper. But the SCV did go down again anyway. So good damage done altogether. There's the other Reaper going down. So actually pulled again, delaying that third command side. Sees the third command side too, which is important. However, first Banshee's across the map already. Two free workers now going to be going down. And here we go. Scan will come in. Marines are in position. It will actually go down pretty quickly. So not too much damage done, but it's enough so far to tie up the worker count. And again, we sort of look at this and we sort of say, well... Where is Pult headed towards? You know, he's without a third command center, whereas Bjorn's is building and about to finish. He has got that earlier stim pack. His upgrades elsewhere, though, are not really too kind of commanding or too kind of like, whoa, wow, that's incredible, you know? It's just very standard stuff, so... Hmm, intriguing. We're going to see Marines from Pult going to start moving out onto the map. I just wonder, I mean, does he try and go for a fight here? Is that what he's aiming towards, like an engagement when he has stim and his opponent does not? I mean, it's a possibility. There's a possibility here in the early stages. Marine's going to be moving across the map still. This Banshee is cloaked up from Bjorn and is just going to be uh, coming in and shutting down another Marine or two. So a few Marines continue to go down right now. And again, those Marines just pulling off over to the left-hand side. Stim will come forwards and he will cloak, uh, hit that Banshee. Scan gets it. So here you go. Pull to attack across the map. He'll probably attack into the third base. It's the most open area, the easiest to attack into. But is he going to get much done in this sort of location? He will look to take the high ground here initially. Ooh, this is interesting though. Bjorn's actually going to siege one tank up on the high ground anyway, so... He'll have a tank here. I think Pult just saw that though. The scans, just a double check, and... Here we go, he's going to drop his uh, tanks down. He'll target down that tank of his opponent. No way that gets out of here. And that's already a little bit of momentum gained by Pult. He will force the CC to lift, and he's actually going to move into position. And here we go, going to start working his way against this. I don't think he gets the kill before he gets repaired, etc. I mean, that being said though... We do see the um, tank sieged up, so if SCVs did come in too close, they would start to go down, but it will get away. And it looks like we're going to lose its lock on range as well right now. Scan from uh, Beyond there is actually going to clean out both those tanks. Bit of a mistake by Pult, not paying attention to those tanks being in position, and so he is going to lose both of those. And we'll just actually end up just pulling back with the rest of his units. But delays the third CC from continuing Myers. His own third base does now finish. And if his own third base now finished up in position, this is going to look a little bit better from Pult. So, just cleaning things up and just taking Myers into his own hands for a few moments. He actually still has more timings available to him. Pult currently with combat shields finishing. That's something which Bjorn will not see in this game for at least another couple of minutes or so. And without combat shields, it can be very, very difficult indeed to take any sort of uh, even fight. So, that's interesting. Marine's going to join up on this upper watchtower. That cyclone still moving around as well. A couple of armories on the way from Bjorn. Okay, wow. Um, is that just because he didn't realize he built the first one? I think so. Because double armory when you're playing bio is very, very, very unorthodox. So I'm pretty sure that's just because he forgot he's already got one. So he decided to build it a second one. We've seen that so much lately. I said this yesterday that we'd seen it so much lately. Like the players playing like double, building like two of the same thing when they didn't mean to just because they forgot or made a mistake. Anyways, look at this big drop coming in from Bjorn. He's got good damage done so far. Two reactors down, a couple of SCVs. I mean, any damage done here is nice, of course. And the ability to get out of there fairly scot free as well is going to be really nice as we see the Marines swimming in. There's actually not enough of them there. I think that's enough units from Bjorn to turn and fight, especially with a plus one armor advantage. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And Pult is really struggling to defend this. Finally, he's going to start moving forwards, and the SCVs have to be pulled in as well. And where is units? You know, why doesn't he have enough to fight this? He's still starting to lose this fight. Plus one armor makes a big difference. There we go, Pult bringing in the double drop from the right side. Obviously that was out on the map trying to get out somewhere and get some damage done, but man, that um, that fell apart very quickly. Marine going to keep, keep stimming forwards here right now. And he's going to clean out that uh, medevac, so medevac falls. And we're just going to see a few marines from Bjorn just going to be uh, moving up here and uh, just kicking down that marine right there as well. Just getting rid of that marine then, and again, just a few more marines from Bjorn. Just collecting together right now. So just collecting together and again seeing what they can get up to. 2 2 upgrade is going to be coming in from Bjorn. So 2 2 upgrades and a little bit of a lead over his opponent. It's uh, very slightly a few seconds, but you never know when them few seconds are the seconds that Pult more or less gets forced to a fight or something. It could become a bit of a bigger deal later on in this. So keep your eyes open on that. 
As we see, Pulp right now is moving on to the map. Army supplies are currently fairly even, so every engagement we see is really going to come down to at this point just who does sort of set up into a better fight. And here we go, actually, wow. I mean, Pulp isn't afraid to fight into this at all, despite his tanks kind of being getting a secondary set of shots off. He actually cleans out a lot of tanks of his opponent, but then the Marines are still left over, so in the end, he doesn't actually have anything to pull away with. Hmm, I actually kind of, initially I kind of liked that when he was killing the tanks of his opponent, but then he had to lift up and leave. Uh, when those Marines started moving forwards, like, there was nothing for him to really stick around before. And we're going to be seeing these tanks just going to set back up towards the third base. Pull up down 20 supply, but he actually has more money in the bank, so he can still uh, pull back. Just going to be seeing those couple of medvacs, couple of tanks moving around. Marines still looking to see what exactly they can do. Vehicle weapons continue to come in right now as well. So vehicle weapons still coming in. And what else is going on? A couple of medivacs to the northern side. They're going to be moving around here. So a couple of medivacs moving around. They're going to be dropping in towards this third base. And just looking to... Sorry, the fourth base. So just dropping in towards the fourth base. Shutting this down. It's interesting that Pult took like the more forward third base. Whereas Pult Beyond took the further back one. But the one that's further back does have that high ground. Which can make it harder to defend. It's interesting that we see kind of a difference in kind of bases taken here. It's one of the things I do like about Frost. We kind of different bases being taken depending on spawns and matchup and other things and also just how you play. That's a good one as we see Bjorn using this double drop to set up position on his opponent's base now as well. And so Pult going to have to find a way to fight this. Now he is 2-2 very very close. 20 seconds away. Obviously just doesn't want to go into that just yet. Marines going to stem forwards as those tanks are uh, up in the skies. And wow look at this. Bjorn just sees the opportunity. He comes in. Four tanks go down already and Pult is losing a lot. He doesn't have much left over at all. There's more Marines from Bjorn. Going to keep on cleaning out just so many SCVs. And now Pult is in a really tough spot. What's this up here? More Marines? He needs to just pull everything together. Bjorn's doing a great job of just pulling Pult around the map. And forcing Pult to split up his units. Just because he doesn't kind of... Can't keep up even. With kind of what is going on. I see a couple of tanks going to be unloading here. Going to see the Marines going to be lifting into the medevacs once again. I'm just going to be seeing a few of those just unloading off over to the right hand side. So... A few Marines will just unload off over to the right side. A scan comes down from Bjorn. Sees a couple of tanks there. The Marines joined up together as well. And we are just going to be seeing everything in just a few moments' time. Getting set to go from pull because he has to try and break out of this. And here we go. Tanks will drop down. The same is actually a very good concave already from Bjorn. And actually, it's going to be uh, Bjorn who's pulling back a little bit here initially. But as his tanks drop back, as he kites away... It's just going to be too much for him, and he does hold this attack. He holds his units, and he takes an even larger supply lead now in this. So, a few more Marines dropping off here. The tanks are going to be setting up towards the third base again. A couple of tanks loading up into those couple of medevacs from Bjorn, and they're going to start moving onto the map. So, those couple of tanks moving onto the map with those medevacs and Marines. They are nearby. They are just below those medevacs for now, coming along themselves, looking to see what they can get up to. Couple of Marines over here just being healed on up as Bjorn will set up into one perhaps final attack in the next few moments. I mean, he's got that lead. It's difficult to attack into your opponent when they've got so many tanks, but I mean, if he can find the right position, this is all going to be about Bjorn very, very soon. Pult with that fourth base cancelled earlier will now lift his maid and send that into location on the fourth just to change things up a little bit. And again, we'll just see how this fight is going to go. Marines, medivacs, tanks. Join together, Scan comes down from Pult, has a little bit of a look at this army. Sees it. Sees what's there. Tank's going to move forwards as well. Ooh, in fact, this is going to be a nice drop if he initially. I think actually that's going to be Pult. He just has more tanks in position in time. And actually pushing forwards for a little bit longer than pulling away a nice timing. Pult's still making this happen to some extent. Actually, all of a sudden, supplies have sort of evened up. And uh, Pult is actually a little bit ahead in army supplies. So, also Pult's also much, fa much faster on his final attack weapon upgrade. And that's something which he doesn't have his armor upgrade, but he will have a small timing window where he will be leading on the upgrades. And maybe that's something he'll try and utilize now as he moves forwards with these tanks. Tanks lifting up. He's going to go down the south side. Maybe going to look to utilize that high ground position and again over the third base of Bjorn. It's a good position to get yourself in. It's a hard position for your opponent to fight against. A few Marines do spot this. Pult right now does have that upgrade timing window in his favor. Let's see what happens. A few Marines moving in. He'll see the tanks of his opponent. Surely realizing he can't possibly attack into that. He does hold the high uh, he did hold a high tank count for a while though. 13 to 13 now, however. It's actually still fairly even in terms of army supply. 
Drop over here gets shut down. That's a nice defense by Pult. Those drops throughout the game have actually been doing a lot against him. And have multiple times really slowed him down quite dramatically. So nice to be able to see him actually shutting one of those down nice and quickly for change instead. And wow, I really thought Pult was kind of dead. But, I mean, again, he lifted his main base orbital. He's defending for now on his four bases. And so... He's still in this. He's still producing. He is down in the armor upgrade now, though. That's worth keeping in mind here as we see the tanks. I'm sure where they want to go. They're going to drop here. That's a lot of tanks from Pult, and that's the thing. He just seems to have more in the medevacs. And Bjorn runs around, loses a lot of air marines there at that points. The tanks continue to trade as well. He's actually just going to be seeing players continue to kind of trade. I like the couple of Vikings coming in from Bjorn. The Vikings will change a lot of the air control and make it harder for these uh, tanks to keep on relocating, etc. As will see some of the tanks starting to pull back. Bjorn, just uh, Vikings nearby. All well, the medevacs are going to lift up there, and they are going to be able to retreat. Now, there is more Marines in the center. Pull, looking around, see what he can do with these. A bit of a run by by Bjorn as well. Send some Marines to the top side. He's going to try and deny that high ground mining, but there's plenty of units nearby. I mean, he'll deny this for a little bit. But Pult should be able to get units there in position to kind of defend against it still. An orbital over here is something which uh, Pult can take advantage of. Definitely stims in. He's going to start targeting that down just as SCV start to come towards it. So that orbital looking as though it's going to go down. These uh, Marines up on the high ground, they're going to get cleaned out as well. Neither player with the Medivacs there, and even the plus 3 armor can't deal with the higher numbers out of Pult. So Pult cleans that up. The tank that was left in the middle of the map earlier is going to get a couple of shots off as Bjorn begins to move forward. Medivac counts might be very different here as well. Maybe that's why Bjorn seems to have less tanks, because he doesn't have as many Medivacs to put those tanks in. And actually, Pult right now, well, he's behind on Vikings. That's the sort of difference here. As we're going to be seeing, ooh, Pult actually gets the uh, unload here initially. And that's a good start for him. It's always nice if you can get the unload and get the head start. And that is, oh, now these medevacs have to be careful, though. Again, the Vikings are going to be very frustrating to deal with throughout the game. And he's even sort of a position right now where, um... He's even sort of a position right now where, really, it's, um... Going to be kind of tough for kind of pull to fight. Because, again, when those Vikings drop or come in, they can do so much damage. Look at this, though. Pulk has the initial sort of setup on this. Now he's going to come in and fight with the rest of his units. He's a little bit late to go with his own Marines. His tank's going to set up. I don't think any player's going to have any Marines left over after this. There's just going to be a lockdown in the center top side of the map. Pulk does seem to have lost a lot more, though. And he's struggling in supply, at least. 135 to the 172. I just feel as though Pulk, that could have... If he'd had his Marines in front just a little bit earlier... So much could have changed as, oh, them Vikings are so frustrating. More medevacs just being picked away at. And actually, look at this. Pult takes the opportunity, well, Bjorn takes the opportunity to move to the top side of the map where he's going to start targeting down a bunch of SCVs. And here we go, coming into us uh, top side now. These tanks will just come in to try and fight, but they're slow. And his opponent's tanks can just lift into those medevacs back away quickly. And it really is just time after time here. Bjorn taking more and more advantages. We're approaching the 20-minute marker but I don't really think we've had a point in this game where Pult really looked as though he was in a winning position. You know, we saw kind of points in the game where Pult looked good. Pult looked as though he might have a slight lead, but he's never looked as though he's just going to win. And as he attacks into this position in the center, he'll lose the last few units. He'll have to type out GG. And we have a rematch from Group A of the SGL Cup. We are going to be going into a grand finals between Bjorn and True. TV 